Hey guys, what's up? Long time no chat. I'm here, I'm gonna be hooking up my backhoe, which I'm not gonna film, cause it's gonna be a very stupid video if I was, cause um, the ground's very uneven and it's just always a struggle. So maybe I should film it just to make you guys laugh. But uh, uh, yeah, I got some stumps to dig out and paper bricks and a uh, bunch of other shit. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna be doing that. And that's not what this video is about. And, uh, oh, hey, look at this. I got me a core aerator, guys, for 15 bucks in a garage sale. And it was almost in working condition. I had to do a little bit there to get it going. But uh, it seems like it'll be all right. Um, my only question is how it will do as a tow behind because um, I'm going to try it as is. And I may actually convert this into a, I got a draw bar, so I'm going to weld it onto a draw bar. So I could uh, hook it up as a three-point hitch. So we'll see if it works all right as a tow behind. Maybe I'll use it like that for a while. But that's not what this video is about either. Um, it, it's what, uh, this video is about maintenance, which I did the other day. I did the whole service there with the hydraulic oil and uh, all that other stuff. And uh, I got a few things to say about my uh, my experiences with that. Um, uh, first things first is about the, the, that suction filter that goes right there in the side that you know they tell you to take off the tire to get to it just to let you guys know that you don't have to take out the tire to get to it. Uh, you can access it actually. Uh, it's, you know a little bit of a chore to get to it but there it is. I mean your wrench will fit right there and then when you pop it out you just pop it out and pop it um, you know, uh, right there in the, the wheel well. Let's see if we get a video shot of the wheel well. See, there's plenty of room there. So just basically you take it out and kind of take it out into that wheel well and then bring it out here and clean it off and whatnot. And that's my point too, is that this is my second time, right? Uh, taking that filter out. And both times I found nothing on there. The other guys on Tractor by Ned who have the GCs, is, kind of say the same thing that it's just a hassle that's really um, I don't know not really needed because there's really nothing there there uh, uh, so I'm thinking I'm not going to do that at the next interval uh, whichever time that's gonna be because I think it's gonna take me a couple years to get to another 200 miles or 200 hours on there but uh, another thing I noticed when I took out that filter is that it was damaged. The threads were damaged, guys. And again, I'm not the only GC owner that, that has noticed that. In my case, the first few threads were uh, flattened and torn. And uh, to the point that I was actually able to just flake them off, with, you know, partially with my finger and partially I uh, used a pair of pliers. Uh, luckily, the filter itself wasn't damaged. It was, you know, the, it still held its integrity, so I was able to screw it back in. But uh, really strange that these things get damaged like that. And uh, the way that it's damaged, I'm kind of thinking that the the ID thread on the transaxle is not fully threaded. I think there's some thread runout, and as a result, when you screw it all the way in, uh, it damages the first two threads. I mean, since other guys are experiencing that as well. Other GC owners, so I'm thinking that may be something. So that's number two. Uh, number three is uh, in regards to the fuel filter, guys. Uh, you know, I'm really confused on what the procedure is here for changing the fuel filter because the manual says, you know, uh, you after you change the filter, you need to bleed the line. So one of them is the screw, one of those screws you see there. And uh, the other bleed screw is, uh, like I still don't know exactly where the screw is on the engine. Uh, uh, Redneck Ed had a bit on that, and uh, I need to look at that again if I was to bleed it. Maybe it's, maybe it's this one? I don't really know. But in any case, what's curious is that the manual says to do that, but when you go on... Uh, Adco's uh, YouTube vid for the GC on changing this filter, they don't have any kind of bleeding involved. It's literally just, you know, drop the old filter, stick the new filter in, and start it up, and you're good to go. So uh, I decided to do a hybrid of that, and uh, Redneck Ed's idea was to actually partially fill uh, 
the canister there with fuel before fully screwing it on to avoid any kind of like um, airlock in the line and I thought that was a good idea so that's what I did so before screwing it back on fully I just kind of stuck it up there and I turned on the cut out the shutoff valve there um, and uh, partially filled it up uh, with fuel and then fully screwed it on started it up no problem so those are just a few of the things I noticed with this last change uh, so maybe I don't know, hopefully you guys will get some benefit from that anyway onwards with connecting this backhoe I'll talk to you guys later bye